Mystery surrounds MCTC, the Military Corrective Training Centre, also known as the Glass House or simply Collie. Cameras are rarely allowed in and rumours of what lies inside are rife. When detainees arrive, they are searched and personal items taken from them. But this is not a prison. There's no bars, no barbed wire. The staff wear greens, just like the detainees. Some of them have been here before, serving sentences themselves. It's all about correction, and it seems to work. The reoffending rate is impressively low, at just 10%, and despite minimal security, no one has tried to escape from here in years. MCTC is unique. Many describe it as the military prison. It's not. We are the corrective training centre, but um, we help soldiers, sailors and airmen um, make change. So that's change so that they can go back to the Army, Navy or Air Force as better soldiers, sailors and airmen. Um, or go to transition out of service life into civilian street with a realistic prospect of employment by giving them some vocational skills and we make the difference. So you can crack on with the, test. the detainees spend their time either keeping up their green skills or in vocational training preparing to transition out of the military. Their pay is stopped and like in prisons privileges such as phone credit, money for the shop and parole can be earned for good behaviour. Inspection is at 0800 each day and for correcting conduct it's a good place to start. Room, room, shut. Good morning staff, I'm D. West Jelly, sentenced by my commanding officer to term detention of 90 days. I'm currently in week 10 of A Company, currently employed in military training staff. If you're having a bad day, it doesn't matter as long as you've made your bed in the morning. As long as you've made your bed in the morning, if you've had the worst day in the world, at least at the end of the day when you go home, you go home to a made bed. And, you know, it's not actually that bad. Do you know what I mean? Like, and then you can start again the next day. Like, you've done, as long as you've done one good thing for that day, then it, the only way is up, effectively. About turn. DUS, or detainee under sentence, Oliver Jelly, was given 90 days at MCTC. Tomorrow, his sentence is complete. This morning, though, he received some bad news. Right then, Jelly. What's going on? Yeah, so, I spoke to my unit yesterday uh, regarding my release tomorrow. OK. Uh, and um, something's come up that I might be getting discharged. Oh, no. Yeah. What's your experience of being here being like? Um, to be honest, I've quite enjoyed it. Coming here is probably a lifesaver. <laughs> I think if I went to a normal prison, I wouldn't be this place where I am now, if you know what I mean, in the state of mind that I am. DUS Jelly doesn't want to talk about what he did. He tells me in a civilian court he'd likely have been sentenced to four years. He desperately wants to stay in the RAF. Oh, you sound like inspired and rare. Yeah, to yeah, 100%. Mm. What, what is it that's kind of made I think you... it's the fact that so I learned a lot of things while I'm here, so I've grown up, you know, I've become mature in myself. Yeah, much better, much in, better person. In just those 59 days? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It needs to be a lot more square and light. I haven't been told I've been discharged yet. Uh, I would be probably be told next week if I am by my commanding officer. So it's, I recommend is there, but my commanding officer has said to me that he already wanted to keep me anyway. So, you know, I've still got my fingers crossed. I know, I know it's upsetting because I know it's not what you want. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like, I feel like this has sort of come along and just gone, like, crushed everything. Yeah. Like, I'm still 18, so I've still got a lot of opportunities ahead of me. Yeah. But, um, you yeah, know, this was my career. This is what I wanted to do for life sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. And, and you know what? Sometimes, like, we make mistakes. Like, yeah. we all make mistakes. Yeah. In your mind, you just think you, you just made a mistake. Yeah, yeah, a big mistake. You know, I'd never do it again. Never. Whatever they've done to get here, I don't really care. I'm here to make sure that when they are here, they're striving to be better, they're motivating themselves, they're motivating others, they're making sure that they are ticking all the boxes that they need to tick in order to either go back to society as a better person, to be an active, good citizen, or to go back to their regiment and, and for their chain of command to turn around and go, do you know what, I can see the improvement, I can see that you've got the zeal, you've got that attitude to get back into the military green lifestyle that we all join for.
And what if they don't have that attitude? Then where do you start? So that's when the challenging behaviour comes in. So that's where I come alive. About turn. I want to challenge that behaviour. Why don't you want to do this? Why don't you want to do that? Right, turn. It may seem strange that an employer, the MOD, should strive so hard to set employees back on the right track. It doesn't happen in Civvy Street. A minor gaffe from a politician, a manager's team losing in a Premier League match and they're expected to resign. Whilst the vast majority are here for minor offences, like going absent without leave, others have committed more serious crimes. Not only could this be a second chance, resources are poured into their development. There's a moral obligation to look after our people. Our people are our core capability. Um, everything we do in the military is about our people. But at a more macro level, it's about the investment the system has made in, in terms of the training um, that we've invested in those individuals. Why would we throw it away for what quite often is a silly mistake? Is rule breaking rather than law breaking? Why wouldn't you want to make those adjustments so that individual can um, rejoin the service. We are recognised as a true vehicle for social mobility. And why would we throw it away? Why wouldn't we want to give them a second chance, reinstall some of those values and standards and start again? It's difficult for the army to let you go in an instant, if that makes sense. Like what you would get fired for in civilian street you would be punished in the army, but it would be a different kind of punishment. I think the army is quite forgiving in, in who you are, and it likes, it likes you to, to be who you are, to learn who you are, to find your way through, to be that, that better person that you can be. My job is to make sure that these people go back to their regiments a better person, and m more often than not, the people that leave here, they go back to their regiment and they promote. <laughs> MCTC wasn't always this cuddly, shall we say. This is the farm, one of the many training areas on offer to detainees. When they were inspected by Her Majesty's Chief Inspector of Prisons back in 2004, the results were not good. It was then they made the switch from a punitive to a more reformative approach. An inspection in 2017 produced glowing results. Some detainees will be filled with dread prior to arrival. Captain Rob Moffat is the officer commanding in charge of both A and D company, those returning to service and those transitioning out. The reputation that the glass house, as people would refer to MCTC, it, it may have been similar to that many decades ago, but we've moved on. It's more about, it's more than just locking an individual behind a door and drilling them and PTing them. It's about unpicking their offending behaviour. One detainee, when he arrived, after a couple of days of being here, physically spoke to, to myself and said, when does it start? And he was talking about the, the excessive PT, the oppressive regime. The punitive aspect of their sentence is that loss of liberty and loss of pay. We're not here to exert any more punishments, per se, on them during the sentence. The first time it was quite a shock because I thought it would be a lot more bearing. So like everyone shouting at you and stuff. DUS Daily is doing his second stint at MCTC for going absent without leave. Like DUS Jelly, he's to be released tomorrow. What are you looking forward to when you get out of? Seeing my kids. <laughs> so, How old are they? I've got a six month, two year old, a three year old and I've got one on the way. So quite a busy man. Yeah. What do you think of the staff that work here? Gleeman, to treat you like a human being and, and let you do stuff. For example, if you want to deliver a lesson, you'll deliver a lesson. When I get my full screw, I would want to come back here as a staff. So, because I've been here before, I know what the lads are going through. Before DUS Daily leaves, he has his haul up in front of the commanding officer. That is. Do you see yourself ready to go back to Six Reg and, and the Army? Yes, sir. And where, and where do you see yourself in five years' time? Hopefully Corporal, sir. We've set them up. They've made a mistake. They realise it, but they're able to set the next chapter up. And it's really rewarding to see that change. Guys and girls that are sent here are not bad people. They've just made some poor choices and it, we're able to put them on the even keel again.
Do you think there's things that you do here that could be done in the mainstream prison system? Um, if any of the governors had the resources we do and the staff ratios we do, I think they would be able to deliver what we achieve. I just think we're different. Um, and I'm lucky enough to have that resource um, to invest. Good luck for the future. Um, and in a positive way, I will, don't want to see you again. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Daly. Good luck. Cheers. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.